Hello, hello, it's Stacy from trulymajestic.com. Today we are going to be making this leaf on this blanket. So this is a basic knit stitch blanket. It was arm knitted. And if you don't know how to do this basic blanket, stay to the end of the tutorial. I do the whole thing there. And I also show you how to felt up your wool roving in the washing machine or dryer so that it won't shed like mad everywhere. Now I am simply pulling the yarn from the back of the blanket to the front and just making a basic chain stitch. Each stitch I make, I go and grab the yarn from the back and pull up a new loop, put my arm through the loop that's made in the front, reach through the back and pull up a new loop. And that is how we're making this chain stitch. So if you know how to do a floating chain stitch, which is what this is, you can make any shape on top of your basic blanket. Just grab some colors. It doesn't have to be wool roving. It can be any yarn. It can even be um, really thin yarn. You know, whatever you want your design to be. You just stitch over the top in the design you want and there you have it. So I will let you get on with the video. So the video I had um, for the back of the blanket actually got corrupted and didn't work so I couldn't film the back. I do have other tutorials of this type of knitting that shows the back and the front at the same time so you can see what's going on, how I'm pulling the yarn through. Um, and I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So if you're having any trouble with this, go ahead and check that one out. It will make things much, much clearer. Now for the very, um, I'm going to come up at the base of the leaf, sorry about that. And when I come up from the base of the leaf to put the veins in the leaf, I'm just going to do one massively huge chain stitch out to the side each time to give it that um, kind of thinner, wispier leafy look. If I, I could just do a regular chain, but it would be more bulky and it would look um, not as interesting. So there's all sorts of different ways that you could do this. This is the way I chose to do it, but you can do yours any way you like.
Hello, this is Stacy from Truly Majestic. Let's felt up wool roving in the washing machine or the dryer, and this is how. Now this wool roving I have is already felted, but I'm still gonna go through the whole method with you so you'll have it down exactly right. So the first thing you need to do with your unfelted wool roving is swirl it around into a nice little um, donut with all of it and then we're going to tie off the ends so it doesn't turn into a mixed up tangled up mass when it's in the washing machine or the dryer. Once all your wool is in a round donut you need to fasten off the ends so one end should be on one side of the donut and the other one should be on the other side. And we're just going to tie a very loose knot. It shouldn't be so loose that it will fall out and it shouldn't be so tight that you can't take it out at the end when you're finished felting. So it is very loose. Now I'm going to do the other side and do the same thing. With the end, I'm just gonna tie a very loose knot and then we are ready to take it to either the washing machine or the dryer. So I only have a washing machine here, but I'm going to explain the process for both because they're very similar. You want to, if you're putting it in the dryer, you want to spray it down with just water. Just spritz it around. It doesn't have to be totally wet because wool felts with friction. So this just helps create more friction and it gets those fibers damp so it can um, get in and felt them. And then you want to pop it in the machine on warm. Do not do hot. That will felt it like mad and you'll have very hard felted wool. Put it on warm and start your machine and then check it after about five minutes. If it's felted enough, you can take it out. If it's not felted enough, pop it back in for another five minutes and you can keep checking it that way. The washing machine is a little bit more tricky, but for the washing machine method, you want to put your wool in the washing machine and wash it on a delicate cycle or quick wash whichever one has a shorter amount of time and you need to wash it with a full load of other clothes this is because if you wash it only on its own it will felt up like mad and then you'll have very hard felted horrible wool and you definitely don't want that so you need to put in a comfortable size to fill up the machine like you would normally wash and when it's finished, you can just dry it on the line or inside. I would not put it in the machine again, um, in the dryer, because you've already felted it up once in the washing machine, so there's no need to felt it again in the dryer, or else you'll have a really tight felt. And you want a really loose, fluffy felt, just enough, enough sorry about that, to stop those flyaways and stop it from shedding like mad everywhere in your house. So this is what felted wool looks like. It's very sturdy, but it still is puffy, fluffy, and it won't shed everywhere. And it'll last a long time if you arm knit it up into a blanket. And the good news is your blankets can also be washed in the washing machine the same way on a quick wash or a delicate cycle and then after they're finished dry them don't put it on a high spin speed because that will really flatten your wool and then you'll have to fluff it up by hand which takes hours so that is how you felt wool in the washing machine or the dryer i hope this has helped this is what your wool should look like after it's lightly felted. It's got a lot of bounce, it's very sturdy, and it's ready to go for the project. So let's start casting on. You can cast on by tying a simple slip knot. And we want to cast on the number of stitches, which is the length of our mattress. So I'm going to just guess, and I'm just pulling the yarn through the loop and then sliding my arm through, pulling it through the loop, sliding my arm through, as you can see. And I'm gonna pull as many stitches as I guess my mattress is long, and then I'll check it out. And if I don't have enough, I'll add more. If I have too many, I'll just unravel some so I have a nice length to fit the length of my mattress. By the way, if this video is going too fast, this is YouTube and you can always slow it down in the settings so you can see what I'm doing at your own pace. 
So I've adjusted my stitches now and it is exactly the length of my mattress. We're going to sort some problems. Your cast on should look like this. It should look like a braid or a plait, but sometimes the understitch starts popping up and you see these little bars. We don't want those. And so we're going to fix them just by simply pushing them back to the back side. Very easy and simple. And then give your um, yarn a tug and you have your nice braid. Now that this is complete, we have our cast on row. It is the length of our mattress. We are going to turn it upside down and we're going to be working with these little bars. So I'm just going to pull my yarn through each bar and make a loop. We don't do the first one because that's already attached to the loop that's sticking up. So we're gonna go right to the second one and pull our yarn through gently and make a loop about the same size. And we're gonna do this the entire way across. So I'll just let you guys watch for a little bit to see how I'm doing this and then we'll skip to the next section. Okay, that's enough making stitches. So we want to take this whole thing after it's all got loops in it, flip it upside down so our braided side is facing up and we're gonna work through the loops now with it facing this way. You always skip the first stitch in every row. You knit the last stitch, but you always skip the first stitch. So we're going right to the second stitch and we just pull our yarn through the back of it to the front and do this the entire way across. Try to make your stitches about the same size. The tighter you make your stitches, the tighter your mattress will be, but this is enough wool to be two layers thick on a double bed. So it is quite thick. And let me tell you guys, this wool is so warm. After sleeping on this for one month, it is incredible how warm this is. In fact, I didn't even need the extra blankets when the weather got cold like I normally do and I don't sweat anymore. So this is really amazing stuff to sleep on. After we get this completely knitted the entire way across, then we always knit the last stitch, which I'm just coming up to. You always knit the last stitch, but you skip the first stitch. So this last stitch, we're just going to knit once, and these are knit stitches that I'm doing. You just pull the yarn right through the side of this and the last stitch sits sideways on the blanket. It won't sit nice and flat like the rest of them. So I've pulled that through. I don't knit the same thing again to start the new row. I skip that one and go to the second one all the way across. Do this for the entire blanket all the way till you have just about enough yarn to do one more row and then we're going to be casting off. If you come across any problem areas of wool where the bits are falling off, simply just stick them back on and rub them between your hands to felt it back on and then continue with your knitting. So here's what my blanket looks like after knitting most of it, half of it, sorry. And this is more of it. And then finally, almost all of it with just enough to do one more row. So now we're going to be casting off. We do that by skipping the first stitch as usual, pull a loop through the second, and now we're gonna pass the second loop through the first one and then drop it off like this. And we're going to do the same thing the entire way across. Knit one loop, pull it through the back loop, and then that's nice and tight, and it will make a nice braid pattern across the top. So your side sides of the blankets, the top and the bottom, will all have the exact same kind of braid looking pattern. Okay, enough of that. Let's skip now to the last few stitches. So to do the last stitches, we just carry on and then the very last stitch, 
we are going to pull the extra yarn through this last loop that I have and if it's a very long tail you can cut it if it's just a little bit long just pull it cinch it up and then weave the tail into the these stitches it's okay if you have a really really long tail it can just be woven into all these stitches even if it's like the entire length across it will be hidden now this is what it looks like on the bed I knitted these stitches very tight so it actually shrunk the blanket a little bit if you make your stitches bigger this would have been a bigger mattress topper but I made them smaller so it's just a little bit too tiny for this bed but that's perfectly okay it's so warm so this is where I got my wool I went to world of wool and they are based out of the UK and all under natural wools and then we're going to sort all of the stuff in the natural wool according to prices low to high so that's how I found my wool. I didn't want a black wool, I wanted a white wool just because I like white wool. So I just picked one of them. <coughs> there wasn't that much difference between them, I just chose white eider top. And I wanted 10 kilos or 22 pounds for one mattress topper, which would be about the size of a double bed if I would have knitted the stitches a little bit looser. So if you want to change the currency, you can go right to the top of their website and you can choose currency by US dollars or euros or great British pounds so I'll just put it on US dollars so you can see the difference if you want to see how much you're gonna pay for shipping you can also go right to the top of their website and on the left side there is a shipping and delivery button so world of wool always gives you a discount according to how much you buy so the more you buy the more discount you get so for this mattress topper which was 10 kilos or 22 pounds of wool was $186 without the shipping on it. So that was a really good deal because if you look at mattress toppers and calculate how much is usually in them, most mattress toppers have a quarter of the amount of wool that I've put in mine or half. This wool is so warm. If you know someone who needs to be warmer at night, please share this video with them. Nothing compares to sleeping on wool. I have to tell you that. I've slept on memory foam and regular spring mattresses. Nothing even comes close to comparing to sleeping on this much wool. Just one more thing before I go. I have also lots more tutorials that are not on YouTube that are on Skillshare and you get two months free of, for joining Skillshare if you use the link in the description. And when you do that, you don't get access just to my content, but you get access to thousands and thousands of creators' content from anything you can think of, from filming, creating websites, art, painting, sewing, like anything you can think of is there. And you get to watch as much as you want of any of the courses for as long as you want because it's a monthly subscription and it is very reasonable. So I hope you'll try it out using the link in the description and I will see you next time.